Wasm versus Wazzy. These are both fun acronyms to use. Wasm and Wazzy, they're, they, what are they? WebAssembly, right? So WebAssembly and WebAssembly System Interface. If we look at the acronyms, they're kind of interesting because we see here that the W stands for web, of course, and then the ASM stands for assembly, so that's the WASM. And versus WASI, the WA stands for web assembly, and then the SI totally means something different. It's a system interface. Now, you kind of get an idea here that WebAssembly and WebAssembly System Interface, they one contains the other, and so one is an extension, right? WASI is an extension where it gets a system interface for input-output, and this is going to be a standardized API that's easily accessible across all the platforms, so you can easily code in your favorite language like C and Rust, accessing a universal API, that then whenever a system is going to run the container for the WASM, it also has a WASI I.O. input that allows you to easily run it on that system. It's really as straightforward and simple because WASM by default has no IO. You can't make HTTP calls. You can't write to disk. You can't log anything. WASM is just a closed system that allows the host and the container to communicate through message passing on function calling through channels. It's really really locked down from a security perspective. And so WASI gives you a nice interface on top so that way you can access IO on the system in a universal, easy, simple way. So now I can make HTTP calls or I could write data to the disk or I could read data to the disk. With WASI, uh, I can do that. You couldn't do that with WASM too. You just have to build it in yourself by manual. It, it requires you to do extra effort. You have to add these function calls on the host in order to do that. And there's no standard. That, that means that you're doing it all on your own. So there's no standard. <laughs> like, and so uh, Waz, WASM is going to just keep everything closed and then WASI will allow IO to occur. What is WebAssembly? WASM is a container system that allows you to securely execute code at native speeds, the near native speeds to the platform. Say if you're compiling code from Rust and C, but you want to run that code anywhere. Really, WASM is mostly run in the web browser. It's got a runtime for WASM that allows you to compile a code like with Rust into sort of a binary that then the browser will execute and run. It's act really intended for performance and speed and gives you that security as well. WASM is locked down. There's no input output other than what the host calls into and what you can call out to from a functions perspective, just in terms of the uh, address table that's available to call upon in the code. So you cannot write to disk. You cannot make an HTTP call inside the WASM container. It's pretty much locked down. Now, obviously, you can overcome this by giving access to the WASM container to a function in JavaScript world that will make an HTTP call for you on uh, on behalf of that. So that is an opportunity that you could do, though you have to do extra work to make that happen. And so WebAssembly is a binary instruction format. It's a stack-based virtual machine, usually run in a web browser, right? which is designed to be super fast and efficient and portable. Now you can run it in Node.js and a couple other places as well. V8 makes this pretty straightforward and easy. And it is also a good way to improve the speed and performance of your Node application. Uh, so that is something to consider as well. It's intended to be uh, a compilation target for high level languages <laughs> like C and Rust and C++. Uh, so you get near native speeds. Uh, the idea is portability, right? So we want to write some code that can compile, but then it can run on any device anywhere in a web browser usually. Uh, anywhere there's a WebAssembly runtime, it's going to run essentially at uh, native platform speeds. And you don't have to worry about whether it's running Windows or Linux or Mac because the binary is the same either way. It doesn't matter what the target's going to be or what the CPU instructions are. You know, it is kind of interesting because I do wonder often compilers will give you the opportunity to take advantage of advanced instructions that are available in compute systems, sort of like vector instructions, that will give you better performance because they can execute in a whole bunch of instructions in one cycle. Now, WebAssembly, you probably might not get something like that. Uh, so that is a drawback, but that's fine. That's why, that's why it's near native performance, right? So <laughs> it's a good trade-off. Um, near native performance center for efficiency on modern hardware uh, that's sort of the idea, the near native performance. You're not going to get the super advanced performance, but good enough. And then security, uh, it's sandboxed. There's no IO. So it's, uh, it's similar to JavaScript in that respect, although you do get access to call upon JavaScript. So you, there might be a little bit of IO, but you have to build it in specifically. And it's intended primarily to be executed code in web browsers. 
you can do it in server-side applications and IoT, but what's the point with an IoT? You're probably going to compile specifically for the target on the device that's the, the chip that's intended for it. So that's, that's, uh, that's the whole point, is reusable code compiled into, um, into a WASM format. But you could also compile it. I suppose if it's written in Rust or C, you can also change the target. And you can have the target run on a server compute side. So then you can get the advantage of the performance there as well. What is WASI, the WebAssembly system interface? Well, first off, it is WebAssembly and runs just the same as it normally would, but there is a system interface part to it that's a whole, the whole new part. And it's really good that they did this because we need a universal way to access IO, input, output, resources like writing to the disk, logging output from a log perspective, but also the standard input, output, right? But also we wanna make HTTP calls, so network access is important as well. That's the whole point of the system interface. It's gonna give you access to the IO. WebAssembly by default, the WASM, is gonna be completely closed. It's a nice closed self-run container. From a security perspective, that's really good because you can't have it access anything. It's basically fully locked and all you have access to is just to run compute cycles based on whatever algorithm you compiled it into the with system interface on the WASI, you're gonna have access to some of the operating system features like IO, networking, oh, and of course the clocks and the randomized numbers. So you're gonna get a little bit more access to some of the devices on the system for IO. That's much better. And it's gonna be API agnostic, which is great because you know WebAssembly, the whole idea is you can compile to a single target and then run that code anywhere, right? It could be on a, on a Mac or on Linux or on a different kind of compute device. It could be on an ARM device. It could be on a, um, you know, x86. Any kind, anything is supposed to work universally at near native speeds. Uh, and so with WASI, it's, it's simply it's simply WebAssembly, but and you can run code outside the browser. But it's intended specifically to run code outside the browser in this case. Uh, browser won't have WASI support probably anytime soon, but it will have WASM support. But the reason why you'd want WASI for the system interface is so that way you can access other system resources, disk access, network access, IO. So you do want a uh, modular set of APIs that can be extended and customized, of course, uh, though you really, from a portability perspective is where WASI comes in. So you can make uh, portable code that works across all the environments as best as possible. Um, and you still have security baked in from the beginning because all the IO is going to be gated uh, by these interfaces. So whatever you do to write to disks and things like that, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be make, I mean, you can, as secure as you can make it. The most secure is of course 100%, you get no permissions to do anything from an IO perspective. Though so that's, you might want that. That's why the system interface comes in from that perspective. It's mainly intended for running uh, WebAssembly code outside of the browser, uh, such as a web server and other kinds of container systems. So really, uh, you'd want, to, you know, it's, mm, it's tough to say because even if you're compiling Rust code to a WASI target, so you have the IO access, you will be running on a server, you might as well compile it directly to the native binary for the target device. I suppose if you have the need to run the code and binary the same across all systems and platforms, and you really do have a lot of platforms, WASI would be a pretty good delivery system, right? So that way you only compile once and you know it's gonna work the same everywhere with near native performance speeds. You're not gonna get the advanced benefits that you could possibly get by compiling to a specific target with a specific CPU instructions that are available. You'll get better performance and better uh, resource utilization if you do that. So that seems like kind of where you'd wanna go anyway. So that might be a hindrance to the adoption of WASI altogether. <laughs> there are main differences between WASM and WASI WebAssembly and WebAssembly system interface. Though really the main difference is just one has access to IO and the other does not. Uh, the intention, of course, for running in different areas and different systems. So let's let's really talk about what's the intent and purpose behind them. WASM, which is the first tech, defines binary format virtual machine for executing code universally accessible with high performance at near native speeds, mostly intended to target web browsers. With WASI, uh, it adds a system interface API that allows you to access IO for disk access and network access and other system resources like getting the current time and uh, the 
a couple other things like randomized numbers that the system operating system will give you access to. So it's suitable for running mostly in non-browser environments. Uh, functionally speaking, Wasm is concerned with the performance and security of code execution. The security is the biggest part and the benefit of Wasm because it has no sec it has access to nothing. There's <laughs> literally no access to anything. All it can do is just execute code in algorithms uh, in, in native near native speed. So it gives you some good performance on that perspective. Maybe thinking of ideas along the lines of, oh, I don't know, machine learning, um, maybe game engines, things like that. That would run really well in web browsers. With WASI, it's essentially just WebAssembly, but it ex is extended with system capabilities, file access network and communication um, through you know making HTTP calls and things like that. Uh, otherwise, it's the same level of security. No, they opened it up with access to disk, <laughs> right? So you're starting to uh, throw away some of the security once you do that, of course. Uh, the implementation with WASM uh, requires no special considerations because you're just going to be running in this container that's self-contained that not a lot of permissions or access to things. So uh, you're really only going to be seeing that run in a browser scenario. WASI requires support from the host environment to expose system resources and it's intended it's relying on that exposure to be done securely though is it gonna be done securely I mean uh, the best of that we can do of course so that that's that's really it there's not much difference there it's really one has access to IO and system APIs which is good because that allows you to do more stuff directly in the container code without having to write custom code for the above hosting environment. So that's a really nice way to write portable code that will deploy everywhere across every piece of hardware that can run WebAssembly.